We, the people of African descent, have a greater story than the one told to you by schools designed to train but not educate. We, the people of African descent, have a history older than this republic. Our history does not begin in slavery, but was birthed the moment God crafted Eden and released holy breath in Adam and Eve. Our history is the story of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Deborah, David, Solomon, Jesus, and Paul. Our history spans Kemet, Ethiopia, Egypt, Cush, Carthage, Cyrene, Hippo, and Alexandria. We are the Moors. We are the Persians. We are the Canaanites. We are the Byzantine Empire, the Ghanaians, Mali, and Sonai. We carved the commandments of God from the mountain, hid Jesus in Africa, journeyed across Rome to spread the gospel, protected Muhammad's people when they sought refuge in Ethiopia, plotted as maroons in the mountains of Jamaica, created the rhythms in Cuba, composed the sounds of Louisiana, and wrote the poetry and art. We, the people of African history, are the Jew, the Muslim, and the Christian. We established the Abrahamic faith and dared rewrite the Protestant tradition through William Seymour. We, the people of African descent, came through the Mafa, and this is our story. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. We welcome you to Trinity United Church of Christ. We love to say the greatest church this side of the Jordan. Welcome to worship today. We begin our Black History celebration here at Trinity United Church of Christ. We call it the Ma'afa. That means disaster but we're gonna take you through some unique aspects of our history. If you are a teacher, if you're a parent, if you're a student, I guarantee you this month is going to bless you. Make sure you download our Maafa program. You're gonna have information about the periods of history that we're gonna be focusing on this month. You'll also get a wonderful Peter's projection map you will receive recipes and a whole host of things. And for our younger people, there will be a coloring book you can download so you can participate all week long in this worship experience. We're gonna grow educationally and we're gonna grow spiritually. But we've got an amazing worship service for you today. Let's go into worship right now. Oh! 
your joy. Don't let this whole world stop your joy. They didn't give it, and they can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. If you have joy today, why don't you make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come on and serve God with gladness. Come before God's presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is God that have made us and not we ourselves. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture, so we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise and be thankful unto God and bless God's holy name. For God is good all the time and all the time God is good. God's mercy is everlasting and God's truth endures to every generation. People of God, why don't you put your hands together wherever you are and give our God some praise. And now for our Black History Month call to worship. Beautiful are the works of God. Beautiful also are the skins of my people. Beautiful is the mind of God. Beautiful also are the hopes of my people. Beautiful is the heart of God. Beautiful also are the souls of my people. God made the heavens and the earth, and my people built the pyramids in the world's first civilizations. God made the seven seas, and my people were the first to sail them. God made us and God made all nations which dwell upon the face of the earth. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. With his blood he has saved us by his power he has raised us. To God be the glory for the things he has done. And always remember my father's children that God is good all the time. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open and all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we come into your presence asking for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fall fresh in this place and space. Reach out through the airwaves. Touch everybody who is gathered in front of a device that they might be blessed by your presence and your power and your peace. God, we pray that you will remove anything in us that's gonna block our ability to hear from you today and that you would get the glory out of what it is that we say and do. Bless the message, bless the messenger, bless the singing, bless the music. Bless every aspect of this worship service that it will be pleasing into your sight. And it is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Hey family, I want to talk to you about next Sunday on our journey, the journey that we call Ma'afa. We'll be looking at the gospel according to Malcolm X. We want to excavate, exegete, and have a greater understanding of this prophet, better known as Malcolm X. I know some people are saying, wait a minute, you're going to talk about Malcolm X in worship? Yes, he's a part of our history. So join us next week, The Gospel According to Malcolm X. But we want to share something with everyone. I had the opportunity and blessing to be part of a documentary that will be premiering this month. It is entitled, The Black Church. This is our story, this is our song. Executive producer, Dr. Henry Louis Gates, and producer Stacy Lynn Holman, a 
friend of mine. We went to high school together. She's an incredible filmmaker and a graduate of Dillard University. Myself and my father are in this film and they chart the history and the impact of the African-American church. Well, guess what, Trinity? We're working on it right now so that you can have an exclusive look at the film and a conversation with the filmmakers. Dr. Gates said to me just the other day, he said, hey, Otis, I want to talk with the Trinity family about this documentary that's premiering on PBS. We're working on it right now. Make sure you're checking your email because it'll be a limited number of people who can be in conversation with Dr. Gates and the filmmaker Stacy Lynn Holman and how they created this incredible documentary. Again, it's Black History Month here at Trinity United Church of Christ. We got some great things happening and we want you to be a part of it. Here at Trinity during our My Office season, we have an incredible worship and arts team that loves to create characters and design a living museum. We're in a pandemic this year. We're unable to do what we normally would do here at Trinity United Church of Christ. But today, our worship and arts team wants to introduce you to August Wilson. Come on, lovey, you got to rehearse with the rest of the band. I'm gonna start me my own band and I'm gonna make me some records. I know how to play real music, not this old jug band stuff. Hey, you call that music? I knows what I'm doing. What y'all gonna do, fire me? I don't care. One, two. When I got there, they began to say. That's to get the people's attention. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and running over, shall the Lord give into your lap. We, the Village of Trinity, are committed to lifting up Christ, engaging our community, and celebrating our culture. Today, your gifts of tithes and offering will allow the work of Trinity to continue as we seek to provide ministry and resources to those who are incarcerated, ill, hungry, hurting, and whose backs are against the walls. There are multiple ways for you to support the ministry of Trinity with your tithes and offerings. You may give through our Secure Give application. You may also text to give by dialing 855-781-8384. You can also use our cash app, dollar sign, Trinity UCC, or use our website. With a few easy clicks, you will be well on your way to support this ministry. Also, our First Fruits Direct Draft Program allows you to make your church a priority. And if you prefer to mail your gift, simply send your tithe or donation to 400 West, 95th Street. Thank you for supporting Trinity United Church of Christ, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. The spirit of kindness, joy, and compassion describes our charter member, Edna Avery. She was part of the first class of women to be deacons at Trinity United Church of Christ. Someone who had a wonderful smile and not only was a prayer warrior, but an individual who poured into other people. We are grateful for God sending such a spirit as Edna Avery in our lives. We salute our charter member, Edna Avery. May God continue to hold her in God's arms as she now rests in eternity with the ancestors. We've now come to the moment in our worship experience where we come to the Lord's table. And I would ask that you would join me as we confess our sins collectively as a community and prepare to partake in this holy meal. Before we do that, let us, let us pray at this moment. Lord, we thank you for setting this table for us. May you bless the bread and the wine that we are about to partake in. We know that it represents the body of Christ and the blood that was shed so that we would be set free. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. Let us stand together, if you're able to, and let us confess our sins together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we come before you acknowledging our sins, our shortcomings, and our breaking of our covenant with you. Not only have we done things we ought not to have done, said things we ought not to have said, left undone so many things we ought to have done and been silent when we should have witnessed for you. Not only are we guilty of that, O Lord, but we have also closed our eyes and pretended not to see the injustices, the racism, and the evil which pervade our everyday lives. We have shut our ears and pretended not to hear the cries for liberation, which come from the lips, the lives, and the hearts of the oppressed, even our own black brothers and sisters. Forgive us, O Lord, renew our courage and faith, and keep us ever mindful of thy great sacrifice. Hear us, we beseech thee, as we come to you in love and worship, giving your name the praise forevermore. The question is often asked, how are we forgiven and why are we forgiven? There is something unique within our tradition known as grace, the unmerited, the unwarranted love that flows from God. Grace means that God blesses, holds, keeps, lifts up, heals, not because we deserve it, but God loves us. Grace. And this table that we are about to uh, sit at, theologically and spiritually, is a grace table. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We go to God at this moment on this table, with the, at this table, because of God's grace. We've confessed our sins together. We know why we come together. This is an act of grace. Let us pray one more time, confessing our private sins, those sins that we have kept from all, but let, them give, let us give it to the Lord at this moment. Lord God, for those things that have been swept into the corner of our heart, forgive us for thought, for words, for actions that rebel against you and hurt our brothers and our sisters. We offer this to you at this moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. On that night, Jesus took the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. I invite you to take the bread that you have, to break it and take and eat. Likewise, the cup of wine after the meal, the wine symbolizing the blood that was shed for the remission and redemption of sin. We invite you at this moment to take and to drink. Let us pray once again. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to partake in this holy meal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, my God, my God. 
Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, my God, my God. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. lift up at this moment those who are mourning. Let us lift up those who are on the front line fighting this pandemic and children whose lives have been altered as a result of this pandemic. We have all come through 2020. It is now 2021 and I'm pretty sure you are tired of being on lockdown. Let us go to God in prayer at this moment. Lord God, may your spirit rest upon every person who seeks, seeks to bring compassion and love to those who are hurting. We lift up children who so desperately want to return to school. We lift up those in preschool and kindergarten and first and second grade, all of those in elementary school. This COVID period 
has completely shifted their education. May you bless parents and educators who are attempting to learn how to do distance and digital learning. And for those seniors who have been isolated from loved ones, may your hand be with them. May you bless them at this moment. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer at this moment and go to God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and see if there is any destructive way in me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Holy Spirit, do thy will, do thy will, Holy Spirit, in the mighty, magnificent, and awesome name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. I would invite you at this time, if you have your Bible with you, to turn with me to Ezra, the third chapter, beginning with verse 10 through verse 13. I'm going to read from the New International Version, and then the final verse I'm going to give you the OM3 translation. It will also come up on the screen. Uh, but let us read together, if you may stand where you are, in your home, <laughs> wherever you may be at this moment. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments with trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with symbols took their places to praise the Lord. 
as prescribed by David of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, God is good. God's love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the Lord's house was laid. But many of the older priests, another translation, but many of the elders and the faith leaders and family heads who had witnessed the formal, former temple, who had seen the former temple, wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid. While many others, another translation, while many others of a younger generation shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise. Another translation, the OM3 translation, as I translate this, no one could distinguish the gospel shout from the blues moan. No one could distinguish the gospel shout from the blues moan because the people made such noise and the sound was heard all over the land. And they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. I would like for this first Sunday of our Black History celebration, the Mafa, I would like for us to focus on this idea of the gospel according to August Wilson. The gospel according to August Wilson. I would invite you to flank me with your prayers as we explore this idea. The gospel according to August Wilson. Uh, beloved, I'm not sure when it happened. It might have been when I witnessed the play Two Trains Running at the Cleveland Playhouse. Or, or maybe if I give a shout out to one of my best friends, Edward Blunt, I flew to Kansas City uh, to see my college roommate and brother Edward Blunt, star in Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Or maybe it might have been when Monica went to see the piano lesson and she could not rest until she walked me through the wonders of what she had witnessed on stage. At some point, I fell under the literary spell of August Wilson. And I would dare say uh, at this moment, uh, without an ounce of hyperbole, he is a genius and the closest person born in this country whose work should always rest next to Shakespeare. No other play playwright, living or dead, has mined the cultural nuance, tragedy, humor, horror, faith, and serendipitous sublime activity resting within black culture. August Wilson is a cultural saint of our tradition. Wilson, for the uninitiated, created 10 plays, each focused on a different decade of the African and American experience. It begins, if we were to go chronologically, with Jim of the Ocean, and then Joe Turner's Come and Gone, and then the 1920s dealing with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, then the piano lesson, seven guitars, fences, two trains running, Jitney, King Hedley II, and finally, Radio Golf. Three of his plays have been adapted for the screen. 
It was first piano lesson, then fences, and recently Netflix released Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. The film starred Viola Davis and was produced by Denzel Washington. If I may stop here parenthetically and just simply uh, say this, uh, that I believe that there would not be much argument if someone were to give uh, the GOAT award uh, to Denzel and to Viola. I've never seen anyone who can embody a character like Denzel Washington as he did when he played Malcolm X. And there is no one who can be as transformative and as emotionally powerful as Viola Davis. If I may add and say this, can't nobody cry like Viola Davis. I've never seen anything like it in my life. But, but the film also stars a gentleman by the name of Chadwick Boseman, a Howard University grad, grad who shall forever be remembered as our artistic embodiment of Wakanda as King T'Challa. It is his work that gave children across the world a hero whose power comes from trusting women and embracing the true spirit of his community. Just, just, just watch the Black Panther again. You will see what I'm talking about. And the scripture says they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. It is in Ma Rainey that we are given the essence of the project of August Wilson, who sought to, under, uh, to uncover uh, what is called the blues narrative or sensibility of displaced Africans. Wilson believed the blues to be the unofficial language of a people stolen from their cultural mother. These blues people from the western shores of Africa by the grace of God, were able to retain and recover much of what was stolen from them and hide it in the blues moan, gospel shout, jazz riff, trickster story, aesthetic style and poetic communication of the preacher, crooner, soul singer, and hip hop artist. Ma Rainey is a story of a people who have a gift ordained by God that is desired by a system that seeks to re-enslave not by chains, but by contracts and copyright and ownership of one's voice on a, a black disc we call records. The scripture says they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. Now I will not spoil the film for anyone, but the themes have an autobiographical element as it was written by August Wilson. When Wilson was working as a dishwasher for $88 a week, he finished writing his first play, Ma Rainey. And he was approached by a producer on Broadway to say that I will pay you $25,000 for this play and we will produce it on Broadway. The only problem was that he had to give the rights to the Broadway producer for the Broadway producer to rewrite the play to make it Broadway friendly. Wilson turned down the money and found a black professor at Yale drama by the name of Lloyd Richards who didn't have the money but a deep respect for the work and they produced it together on a small budget. I might add that it later did make its way to Broadway and that year when it was placed on Broadway was listed as the best play that had been produced that year. And New York Times said one of the 10 best plays produced in the last five years. As a matter of fact, I believe there was a shirt that I saw a young man wearing uh, that spoke to the dilemma that Wilson was dealing with. The shirt that he was wearing that I witnessed this young man wearing, it said simply this, they want our rhythm, but not our blues. Those who wanted to make a profit saw the play as entertainment for the New York elite. Wilson saw it as a tribute to his ancestors and a testament to the power of women and men denied an opportunity in this nation. And the scripture says they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. 
<clears throat> it is Wilson who helps us today with looking at Ezra. Let, let us look at the scripture for a moment. Uh, the Persian king, King Cyrus, allows the people of Israel to go back home. They had been living in exile. A people who were familiar with the blues through the tragedy of forced exile. The Jews were forcibly removed like the Iroquois, the Arawak, the Lumbi, and the Cherokee, or those across the Atlantic like the Akan, the Igbo, the Yoruba, and Fulani. They witnessed broken families, lost traditions, and were forced to whisper about their mighty history for fear the empire might punish them for being uppity. And they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. This word speaks of what we think uh, is a grand moment of the rebuilding of the temple in Israel. A temple that had been destroyed as a result of conflict. The community is celebrating. We think uh, we should be celebrating together. But there is a blues sensibility in this particular narrative. Uh, the pain of their history is present in the inauguration of the building project. That even though there is an inauguration, there is still pain of their history and their yesterday in their hearts. Why are the sounds of blues and gospel heard in this text? Why are some people shouting and other people weeping? I simply want you to remember this. If you do not remember anything else that I say on this day, uh, that this word teaches us something, uh, Ezra right here, uh, that connects us to the project of uh, August Wilson, that the blues keeps us rooted in reality. Uh, these are moans of historical memory. Those who remember what life was like before this moment of an inauguration. Those who do not want to wipe away their yesterday but want to merge the yesterday with what is going on today so that they may forge a new future. You need to be careful with people who want to delete the past as if they can move into the future without facing some of the horror of yesterday. On that day of the inauguration of the 46th president, a young woman took the stage, brilliant and articulate and beautiful, a young lady by the name of Amanda Gorman. She is the youngest poet laureate ever to present at an inauguration. But she gave us blues in one hand and gospel in the other. As she read her poem, she said, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this ever ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We must brave the belly of the beast. We have learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet, the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we have weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken but simply unfinished. She spoke with authority and power. She had a blues moan and a gospel shout at the same time. And I say to everyone who hears my voice of this day, that the blues keeps us rooted in reality and connects us to historical memory. My friend Gary Simpson said something that has always rested in my spirit. He says, I remember to remember so that I can be reconnected with other people and those who have gone before me. I remember so that I can remember and be reconnected. And I say to you on this day, do not be afraid of your blues. Suffering did not yet break us in our yesterday. 
Our democracy is tattered, but I still see the earth turning to give a new dawn. And there were some who had the blues moan and others who had the gospel shout and they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. You see, the blues must be integrated into our faith. It must fill uh, up that empty space in the world so that we are able to see the world with a pragmatic and realistic eye, but never giving way to hope. Mm. Uh, but you see in the text, it says that the older people are weeping. They are weeping because they remember what it was like. The younger generation is shouting because they do not have the historical memory. And there is a necessity for both generations to be together, to connect the fact that the blues are important. Just as Wilson, as he was writing, believed that what I am doing is I am bringing forth the story of our ancestors so that this generation will not just shout, but also have a blues moan. The people are weeping and shouting. Please do not miss this. You see, one must understand this, that the tears are at times my only form of communication. There must be moments where we all learn how to cry. God gave us tear ducts, not so that they could be placed aside and never be used, but sometimes, in the words of my father, as he told me, he said, sometimes tears flow to clear your eyes so you can see God clearly. See, words are not enough. My words cannot express grief and joy dancing as one. My words are not enough. Words cannot fully express the memories of horror mixed with hard-fought hope. Words are not enough. They cannot speak the unspoken fears nor shout the faith that the dark past has taught us. Words are not enough. Words will not come to measure the depth of our loss or the height of our gain when amazing grace steps in the room. Sometimes tears are all I have. Sometimes tears express everything that's in my soul. They could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. And I say to you on, on this day, this, this first Sunday, this first Sunday of our journey of the Martha, uh, use your tears. Do not be afraid for tears to flow. They sometimes will clear your eyes to witness God before you. Do not edit your story. Ah, your story is filled with moments of shouts and also with blues. Beloved, live no longer in shame or fear of your story because grace sits with you. Tell the whole story of the blues and the gospel. If I may break it down and tell the story of Amazing Grace, uh, the most popular hymn within the Christian idiom, it is believed that it is a person by the name of Newton who wrote uh, the song Amazing Grace. And that is true. He was a peddler in black flesh. He was a slaver. The story goes that he was on a ship and he prayed a prayer uh, unto God. And that is how he got the lyrics of saved a wretch like me, that God stopped the storm when he thought that he would be overtaken by the waves. And that is the English side of how this story is told. But if you go down to South Carolina in the Gullah region of South Carolina, off the coast of Charleston, you will hear another story that is passed from mouth to ear about amazing grace. The story goes this way, that Newton was on the deck of the ship, but it was not Newton's prayer that God heard. It was the prayer, it was the moans of those who were in the hull of the ship, that they were moaning and making a sound 
that made its way all the way up to heaven. An angel heard it and tapped God on the shoulder and said, you need to hear these children sing. And God bent down from the banister of heaven and said, shh, and stop the storm. You see, when you sing Amazing Grace, it is one of the few truly American hymns because the words are English coming from someone who comes out of the United Kingdom. But when you listen to the music, the music is structured in what is called the pentatonic scale. It is an African melody. And it is Amazing Grace is the only hymn that the only way that you can play it, you've got to have the black keys playing with the white keys. You see, if you take away the black, black keys, uh, you will have grace, but it won't be amazing. But when you put them together, you will have amazing grace. When the two come together, in other words, when the blues moan and the gospel shout come together, something unique is created, a new music is birthed into this world. And they could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. And so I simply must uh, begin to move from this place. I've kept you too long on this day, but I have to lay out a few things for you so that you understand with clarity uh, what God is saying in this particular word of God. That even in the midst of when God is trying to speak in a moan uh, and in the blues and in a gospel, God is doing something unique. It says that they are weeping, that they are shouting, uh, that they cannot distinguish between the two. Uh, but something else is happening here is that the temple is not finished, but the people are already celebrating. Oh, you, you missed your shout there right at that moment. Uh, you've got to understand that this is out of a particular idiom that I speak of that the people were shouting before the battle was over. Uh, I got a shout right there for somebody in the stream right now, that even though they had not finished, uh, even though it was an unfinished temple, it was an unfinished cathedral, it was an unfinished nation, it was an unfinished movement, it was unfinished work, the people were shouting before the battle is over. Uh, some people know what I'm talking about. Some of you were able to get accepted to school and you had an elder in your family. As soon as you got the letter, they started shouting in your family. Now you had not taken a class, you had not graduated, and you definitely hadn't paid your tuition. But Big Mama was already shouting because Big Mama said, I'm gonna shout before the battle is over. And I know that there is so much that is unfinished in your life, that there is so much unfinished in this world, that we've got to learn how to shout before the battle is over. I learned this idea, I have to be honest, uh, in high school, at Shaker Heights High School. I went to my first pep rally and there was a friend of mine who was a cheerleader sister by the name of Kim Carroll. And Kim was always trying to do the cheers for everybody. And I was being just an ignorant sophomore. It's like, why do we have to make all this noise? Because our team has yet to play. We don't know if they're gonna win. I tried to tease Kim at lunch. And Kim simply said, Otis, my job is that we are to shout before the game is over because we are to support our team, uh, that we've got to raise our voices before the opponent even hits the field. And it dawned on me much years later, that is what God is calling us to do sometimes, uh, that we've got to know before the battle is over, that the foundation has already been laid. You've got to learn how to shout 
before you graduate. You've got to learn how to shout before the door has been opened. You've got to learn how to shout before your healing comes. You've got to learn how to shout before you finish your dissertation. You've got to learn how to shout before you are accepted. You've got to learn how to shout and practice that shout before the battle is even over. You see, you have to do like those in the South and our ancestors would say, You've got to know what God has done for you. I know the God that has opened doors. And if I may break it down this way, if I was in Florida, they would say, praise him, praise him, praise him. If I was in Georgia, they would say, he can open doors that no man can shut. If I was in Alabama, they would say, my God looked beyond my faults and supplied my needs. In Louisiana, they would say, you don't know what the Lord has done for me. And if I was in Mississippi, they'd say, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? <laughs> but I'll say it the way I like to say it. My God has been so good to me. My God has picked me up and turned me around so many times and placed me on solid ground that even though uh, I have not finished the work that God has called me to, I'm going to shout right now. And there may be somebody who is on the stream right now that maybe the foundation has been laid, that the walls have not yet gone up, but you need to shout right now. You need to have a blue sensibility. Remember the pain of yesterday, but don't forget your shout for tomorrow. That's why when we come to church, we merge Calvary with resurrection. Calvary is the blues moment. Resurrection is the gospel moment. But when you merge them together, you can't distinguish between the blues moan and the gospel shout. May God bless you. May God bless you real good. But is there anybody in here who can shout right now? The battle is not over, but God is still working and God is still moving and God is still loose and holy mischief is moving across this land. I don't know about you, but I feel my help coming on right now when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all God's done for me. I just want to shout and give my God praise. They could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. Make sure you are rooted in historical memory. May you never cast aside your tears. And may you merge together one tradition with another tradition that you will connect your theological and spiritual experience to your ancestral past and what God is opening up into your present and future. But finally, once the foundation is laid, do not in any way, shape, or form have any shame about shouting right now. The battle is not over, but God is still at work. They could not distinguish between the gospel shout and the blues moan. And it was August Wilson who sought to do in his cultural project to bring the blues moan, the gospel shout, the jazz rift, the creativity and poetics of oral communication from every tradition in his community and reposition it so a new generation would be able to drink from this cup. May God keep you and may God bless you. I pray that this message was a blessing to you on this day. And if you'd like to become a part of Trinity United Church of Christ, we welcome you. 
right now. If there's information that has come up on the screen, just call or send an email and say that I want to become a part of this community. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Just call. As a matter of fact, if you call, just say that uh, I'm bringing my blues moan and my gospel shout to Trinity United Church of Christ. I'm bringing the historical memory, my challenges. I'm bringing my tears and my joy. I'm bringing it all before God in a community. Not that we are perfect as people, but we serve a perfect God. We welcome you to be a part of this community, to accept Jesus Christ. And I want to, before we exit from this space at this moment, offer this final blessing. I ask that you would just hang around because we want to share with you what is going to happen next week at Trinity United Church of Christ. This is Black History Month. This is my offer. We thank our drama ministry, our music ministry, our dance ministry, our worship and arts team for all of the work that they are doing. But I want to offer this blessing to you. May you be unafraid to share your blues moan. May you be unencumbered to offer a gospel shout. May you discover the power of your testimony. May you never try to edit your story and hide the fullness and the beauty of who you are. May you always stand in authenticity in the light of God. May the peace of God be with you. May the peace God be with you and with you. May no demonic force enter your household. May God place a hedge of protection around you and around yours. And may the sunlight of God, of Christ, may it grace your cheek. May rain gently fall on your field. May you embrace your blues and may you release your shout and may God keep you in the hollow of God's hand until we meet again. Keep on utilizing your blues and your gospel. God bless. I'll see you next week. Peace. like to learn more about the great August Wilson, you can contact our bookstore, The Akiba. The information has come up on your screen right now, and you can check out some of these wonderful publications by August Wilson. <laughs>